Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to my talk. Unfortunately, I fell sick and I have to give this talk virtually. I would have loved to meet you all in person and discuss with you our robotics research in Japan, but we will do this again at the next conference. I also have some personal news to share. I recently took up an Alexander von Humboldt professorship at the Technical University of Munich in Germany, and my lab has been expanding from Toronto, Canada to Munich, Germany. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the incredibly supportive environment that I have experienced at the University of Toronto. And I want to thank one person in particular, Tim Barfoot, who welcomed me in Toronto more than nine years ago and trusted my abilities as a young researcher. Thank you. Three researchers from Canada have joined my lab in Munich and the rest of the team is working with our robot setups in Canada. And these are also the people who are behind all the results I'm showing today. As part of our move, we have rebranded as the Learning Systems and Robotics Lab. And you can find us on social media under at LearnSyslab. Finally, I'm hiring researchers at all levels, as well as engineers and admin staff. And if you are interested, please get in touch. Okay, there's now enough of all the personal updates. Let's get started. My talk today focuses on safe learning and robotics, a topic that is close to my heart. The motivation for this work is rather simple. The next generation of robots will rely on machine learning in one way or another. We need machine learning to understand complex environments and complex robot dynamics, to perform complex tasks, and to interact with the world. However, when machine learning algorithms or their results are deployed on robots in the real world, their safety is important. To set the stage, I'd like to take you to my lab. My team works on high performance control of mobile robots in increasingly complex scenarios. Our goal is to achieve high performance motions for teams of robots. Here you see 25 vehicles that coordinate their motion and we have also taken these vehicles outside of the lab to a mock-up nuclear power plant facility to study how they can be used for monitoring tasks. We have deployed machine learning in other safety critical applications, such as outdoor flight, where we use vision for localization if GPS fails, and where we experience winds up to 28 kilometers per hour. We have deployed flying vehicles in mines and have conducted long-term off-road driving experiments. We also drive on the road for the SAE Auto Drive Challenge, which the University of Toronto won now five times in a row. And with our mobile manipulator, we finally directly interact with the environment. What we have repeatedly seen is that the use of data can improve performance. In a typical control system, we design a baseline controller based on our prior knowledge in a way that achieves good reference tracking, meaning that the actual output follows the reference signal closely. However, often we see something like this, that the desired trajectory in blue is not followed very accurately and we see a repetitive error whenever we perform this task. And this is shown in the colored lines. This calls for learning and a very simple way is to iteratively update the reference trajectory. If we do that, we see that the input is moved earlier and shows larger amplitudes. And then we can get much closer tracking. We have used this for tasks such as flying fast slalom motions. The disadvantages of this approach is that we have to relearn every single task from scratch um, through repetition. So a slight modification of the architecture allows us to learn an inverse model, which we do offline from data we collected. And then we can improve tracking for arbitrary trajectories. 
as you see here. So the students in the lab draw trajectories in red, and then the quad rotor with the learning enabled um, is shown with a green trajectory. And we get significant performance improvements of around 60% compared to no learning, which is a light gray line. We've also used this on a mobile manipulation platform where we do not have access to some of the lower level controllers, but we can still use that approach as an add-on module to improve tracking performance. And so here you see that we need to be very precise in space and time to catch balls. And with the inverse model learning approach, we can reduce the tracking error of the base and the arm by around 80%. And then we can achieve catch rates of around 85%. So this is in real time. We are not perfect. Sometimes we do not predict the ball trajectory accurately. So this is a different problem. But sometimes our tracking is still not accurate enough. What these two examples show is that with relatively simple methods and without knowing much about our system, we can use data to improve performance. But what does safety mean in this context? For these two approaches, safety means stability. So if the baseline system is stable, which is shown in this gray shaded area or box, then our learning guarantees that um, we stay stable. So safety in general, it means stability, like keeping a flying vehicle in the air, or it means safe constraint satisfaction, keeping objects balanced on the train and avoiding the obstacle. To sum it up, the safe learning control problem aims to use data to improve a robot's decision-making under uncertainties while adhering to given safety constraints. I hope I convinced you that data is important even in simple control cases and that safety matters in real world robotics applications. In the remainder of this talk, I want to present to you the UBS, the state of the art in safe robot learning, the Quo Vadis, what are the open challenges and what is my vision for this field, and the Quam Profitris, what we need to, to do to enable progress. So this first part, summarizes the key, key results of a review paper my team has done recently. What we've seen is that the field of safe learning in robotics is driven by the controls and the reinforcement learning communities and often um, quite separate from each other. With our review article, we hope to bring these works together in one place and unify language with a goal to ultimately accelerate research in this area. The controls and the reinforcement learning communities come really from two different extremes. The model-driven approaches, um, which are usually the classical control approaches, they consider a set of predefined robot dynamics and environments and design controllers for those conditions. So only a small portion of the world can be accurately modeled with the simple models. Think about a linearized system around an operating point. And usually there's a clear understanding what can be accurately modeled and is safe, shown in green, and what cannot be accurately modeled and is unsafe in red. In this case, it is possible to give guarantees within the specific context, but generalization to new operating conditions is challenging. Data-driven approaches which are usually um, reinforcement learning approaches, learn a model of the world over time by collecting data. However, there's usually no clear boundary between what can be accurately modeled and what cannot be accurately modeled. These approaches allow for high generalizability, but providing guarantees is usually challenging. And finally, the combination of the two approaches promises generalizability with guarantees where we use models and learning together 
to improve the model over time with a predefined risk. And what we established in our review article is that the safe robot control problem, which has been studied in the controls and the reinforcement learning community, can be generally described as an optimization problem where we want to minimize a cost subject to the true dynamics of the robot and subject to constraints. And here, all of these components can be unknown. The dynamics of the robot can be unknown or partially unknown. The cost can be partially unknown and the constraints. So for example, we may not know the exact mapping, how states and inputs map to the task performance metric that we are interested in. And then the question is really, how do we design algorithms that map our prior knowledge and any data that we have collected from the system to the optimal control policy? And this is what we call the safe learning control problem. In the literature, we have found three different safety levels that um, these approaches have. Safety level one allows a minimal safety constraint violation, so failures are possible. Safety level two guarantees safety constraint satisfaction with a predefined probability, so with high probability we don't see any safety violation. And safety level three guarantees no violations at all times. And with these safety levels being defined, we can map the current literature in this field, in this diagram, where we have on the vertical axis, the increasing safety guarantees from no guarantees to hard constraint satisfaction. And on the horizontal axis, we have um, our knowledge about the system from fully known dynamics to unknown dynamics, where as we go to the right, we have an increasing unstructuredness and uncertainty of the problem. And so classical control approaches fall into this left area. We assume we have a prior model with possibly bounded uncertainties, but we assume this prior model and the bounds of the uncertainties are correct. And if they are correct, then we can provide hard constraint satisfaction. Reinforcement learning, on the other hand, lies at the bottom. There are usually no guarantees, but also no assumptions made on the dynamics. And the perfect example for this is OpenAI's um, hand that solves a Rubik's cube. This is hugely complicated dynamics that are very difficult to write down or make any assumptions about, but Reinforcement learning can achieve this task. However, only sometimes. So only in 20% of the hard cases, this um, learned policy is successful. And 80% of the times the cube is dropped or a time, time out is reached. So there are really no guarantees about the performance of the policy. And now the safe learning approaches have tried to fill the wide gaps. And one category that we um, found in the literature is safely learning the uncertain dynamics. And the key idea here is that you may have a normal, nominal dynamics, but there are uncertain components of your dynamics. And those are often modeled with a Gaussian process, where initially your uncertainty, the blue shaded area, is large, but over time, as you gather more data, the uncertainty shrinks. And this stochastic model is combined with robust control to guarantee safety for all possible models represented by the blue shaded area. And so we have shown this here on the off-road vehicle with a simple kinematics model alone, we hit those pylons and we cannot guarantee that we follow the path accurately enough. If we add this additive um, learned model, initially the uncertainty of that learned model is large and the robot drives slowly to keep the 
um, purple envelope within the path bounds for the next few seconds. And as we gather more data, the envelope shrinks and we can try faster. While this approach always guarantees that we satisfy the path constraints. We can use a similar approach also to learn the cost function of a task. So here we want to understand how controller gains one and two map to the, perf the performance of the task, which is a hovering task. And over time, we can explore safely these possible set of gains that could lead to high performance while never um, jeopardizing the safety. And so eventually, we find the optimal gains that are in the that are safe and um, get an optimized control. So these are some examples. Um, that safely learn uncertain dynamics or uncertain cost functions. A second category is safety certification and safety filters. The main idea is that we may have very complex learning-based controllers that may even include, you know, as an input, images. Um, but then the safety certification filter um, minimally modifies the input to make sure that the system stays safe in the future. One approach in this category for my group is the Lipschitz network adaptation. So think of the previous um, inverse model approach where we learn this inverse model offline. Here we learn it online as we go. And the assumption that we make is that this underlying system is L2 stable. But then the following condition can guarantee that the closed loop system is stable. The Lipschitz constant of the neural network needs to be smaller than one over the system gain. And the system gain is something very easy, relatively easy to identify through an experiment. And so by using the particular Lipschitz architecture, Lipschitz network architecture, we can guarantee that the prescribed Lipschitz constant is satisfied. So we only learn um, models that guarantee that our inputs are certified and safe. And so we modify the neural network gains if, um, if we think it's unsafe. And we use this for stabilizing a pendulum on a quadrotor on this very basic off-the-shelf quadrotor. And with a standard model-based approach, it's extremely difficult because there are many non-idealities that we don't know of. But with the Lipschitz network approach, we can actually stabilize the model. And it's learned and adapted online as we go. So it's really quick, as you see, and it can even sustain wind disturbances. The third category, um, driven by the reef, reinforcement learning community encourages safety by including constraints in the cost function. And so as we minimize the cost function, hopefully we eventually also satisfy the constraints. So it encourages safety and robustness. Ultimately, we want to go here to the top right that we can deal with very complex and um, systems and have very expressive models by still providing safety guarantees. So what are the open challenges? A broader class of system is what we need to look at. Right now, we assume ordinary differential equations uh, that are sufficiently smooth, but the real world is not smooth. We have hybrid dynamics when we grasp objects. Um, have also multi-agent systems and soft robots that cannot be modeled with the current approaches or captured with the current safe loading approaches. We also need to work on scalability and sampling and computational efficiency. Even very simple examples as the inverted pendulum here on the left sometimes takes hours to days to train a safe controller. So how do we go from simple tasks like these to something much more complex like the self-assembling satellite on the right the computational power is extremely limited and safety is critical. 
Another point is that all these approaches assume that they have a state estimate available that is reasonably good. Maybe you know corrupted by white noise, but otherwise reasonably good. But this is not true in practice, where we have you know, um, complex sensor suites that um, provide high dimensional sensor data, and we need, first have to make sense of that data and extract the state. So how do we do this is if maybe the model of the system is not even available. Then safety guarantees rely on assumptions, even very minor ones, such as bounded disturbances or Lipschitz dynamics. But how do we verify that some of these assumptions hold in real world settings? We can, because we collect data all the time, but what do we do if they don't hold? And one of my favorites is, can we infer automatically what is safe? A robot with a camera can semantically understand the environment and should be able eventually to infer safe behavior instead of for us to manually program those constraints such as the room boundaries and the obstacle positions. So how do we make progress towards these goals? One thing that we noticed in our review paper is that results have been tested on a wide variety of different systems, from numerical examples to grid worlds to physics-based simulations and real robotic systems. But out of the 80 papers, only about 30% provide hardware experiments, which suggests that it is still very challenging to run many of the proposed algorithms in real time in practice while also guaranteeing the satisfaction of all, this, all the assumptions. We also noted that less than 20% of the papers provide open source implementations. This affects reproducibility and discourages comparison among different algorithms. So as an answer, my team developed Safe Control Gym. Safe Control Gym is an environment that helps us benchmark any learning and uh, model-based controller and also safe learning-based control. It's a physics-based simulation as a compromise between realism and accessibility. And it now very recently got us into real transfer option. The key features that we included that were not part of any of the popular RL benchmarks is the allow the symbolic definition of prior knowledge, such as dynamic situations. Safety constraints can be specified, and we can reproducibly inject disturbances, such as input disturbances, process noise, and adjective dynamics. Finally, it's compatible with all of the other um, environments through the gym interface. We started with three systems, the card pole and the quadrado moving in 1D and 2D, but now we also have a 3D quadrado. Um, these tasks were or these systems were chosen because this was the minimal common denominator we found in the RL and the controls literature. The two tasks that we included right now, but which can be expanded by anyone later, is stabilization and tracking of a predetermined trajectory. So finally, this enables now to benchmark model-based and learning-based control as well as model-free reinforcement learning. And one of the big benefits when you use this environment is that we have implemented many baselines already which you can use to compare your algorithm to. And those range from classic model-based control approaches such as LQR and model predictive control and standard reinforcement learning approaches such as PPO and SAC to some of the latest safe learning control approaches. And then you can get results such as this. Here, the robot needs to stay in the black square while tracking the red circle as closely as possible. Now we can use approaches from the different categories that I introduce and compare them. You can also compare them on performance and data efficiency. So here the blue 
line is a model-based learning approach where the parameters are overestimated by 150%. And on the vertical axis, you see the performance on the given task. And on the horizontal axis, you see the training data needed. And so you see that this model-based approach, despite the model being quite wrong, requires like less than uh, two magnitudes of data compared to a completely model-free learning approach. We've taken this to the community. And here at IROS, we, we um, did a virtual safe learning competition where the objective was to design a controller or planner that safely slaloms through a set of gates and reaches a target while avoiding obstacles. And the challenge was that there are uncertainties in robot dynamics in the mass and inertia and the environment such as wind and the position of the gates. And here you see the video of the winners. And we encourage participants to explore both control and reinforcement learning approaches. And the top approaches we tested in our flying arena in Toronto, and you see we can guarantee centurial transfer. This keeps us grounded because we actually test on real vehicles. And we notice, for example, some approaches are not fast enough to run on the real vehicle very well. So I hope you remember our review paper on safe learning and robotics, and you contribute to the field, making use of our safe control gym benchmark suit. And if you are interested in any upcoming events and competitions, go to saferobotlearning.org. We also have recordings of some of the past workshops that, that we have been organizing in this, in this topic. There's also a way to sign up to our mailing list. And since Q&A is very difficult in a virtual setting, I thought I'm just hosting a Zoom meeting next week after everyone is back home. And so if you are interested to just chat and ask questions on Zoom, um, fill out the form at tiny.cc slash iroscoffeechat. Thank you so much.